Hi, this is Crazy Kirk, the janitor down here at Y Marina, introducing the new Wellcraft Maverick 220DP. You'll love this boat. Look at this. Now, isn't that a pretty thing? Look at that black with the pewter bottom, two tone paint, partial hard top, net holders on the side, a set of three stainless on each side, welded, grab handle on the rear. Nice pin striping. Up on top you see a little pod. That's if you want to go to remote spotlights. Welded on cleats where you need them. This is where kind of was one of my pet peeves. When everybody puts these right here, they don't do you any good. So right here is where you want them. You want the other cleat right here before the turn of the bow. Because if you have it up here, it does you no good at all. LED running lights. Here's your fuel fill. That keeps your weight centered up in the front. Then you got your offshore bracket back there with the motor so that equalizes the weight. So you don't get the porpoise in, you get your lift. And these rivings here, plus this toe kick rail, that helps keep the water shoved down as well as this reverse chine right here. That keeps all your water spray going down instead of up on the window. And this is a partial hard top with the sliders also has dual wipers has a gold wing door with the top door which is nice you can flip it up to get air into there you can flip the other door open instead of having to unsnap the canvas also this is a two two piece welded so say you didn't even want those there you can just pop those right out it's got diamond plate deck on the bow got a fish box up front large drains so if you were to get water coming in here, it's going to drain out quick. That's pretty good, huh? Anyway, it's shallow deck. That's good. You don't want them deep because they hold a lot of water. This is all a sealed deck area. No water can get inside this boat. Here's your little anchor locker right up into here. Another cleat up front. Now we'll walk back here. And this is 39. This is the deep V. This is 39 inches tall, which is nice in the degree of the hole in the back. You got 18 by 28 midship, which gives you a nice ride. Plus these reverse chines right here, big bonus. This is the reverse plus the reverse. Flat pad, it's like a big base coffee cup. Like the bigger the base, harder to tip. If you had a small one, it would end up tipping over on you. So now this is kind of unique too, which a lot of people don't understand. This has kind of got a delta pad right here. But if you look up underneath, you see how it kind of angles like this? And plus this goes this way and the boat goes up. The reason for that is to pick this boat up really quick so it doesn't take the horsepower. Also has trim tabs, quick release for your kicker motor. Kicker motor would just bolt right on here with the tie bar to this. Real sanitary on your hydraulic lines for your steering for your main motor. Wiring harness, you don't have all those gas lines and electrical the power negative positive cable hanging all over the place clean deck okay and this has got the stern wrap rail all polished out with your downrigger welded on brackets your backdrop curtain accessible for a camper top we we'll go over here you got your uh, two uh, two-step ladder with a grab handle right here so you can get into your boat since it's so deep and the biggest thing why we put ladders in these is uh, two reasons. The first reason when I started doing this was to get into the boat when it was on the lot. But the number one reason why you should have a ladder is if someone ever fell in, 90% of the deaths out in the ocean, people cannot get back into the boat. So now we do all our boats with a dive ladder. <clears throat> this is a transducer bracket. That's where you hang your transducers for your uh, depth sounders. Went to the new uh, aluminum plug. The threads in instead of using a t-bar or flip up rubber style got ch chine guides easy loading these will run on your chine instead of on the side of the boat so you keep your scratches off anybody can load this boat you get the bow into the back part of this trailer here this boat will just guide itself all the way up to the front it's got dual disc brakes gear bath oil hubs Easier maintain, maintenance. You got your uh, cast 
winch stand here for your winch, you no more rusting. And that's a two, a two speed, not that you need it because you should be able to drive this boat right up. It's also got your backup cap. Say if you weren't plugged in for some reason, you wanted to back it up, you can just go like this and twist it and that will disengage your brakes to go backwards. Okay, I'm going to shut this off and then we're going to go inside the boat. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. But before we do, we'll tell you about this new 200. This has been a proven seller now. It's a Yama 200 XB inline four cylinder. It's three pounds lighter than 150. Acceleration, I would say, is probably 35% greater out of the hole. It kicks in about 2200 RPMs, almost like a turbocharger. And that's because of the variable camshift timing. Now, I don't know if this is a prop, but I'm gonna try a 17. On this, hmm, I might have to change the diameter in the pitch. We'll know when I take it to the water. And on this Yamaha, like all Yamahas, this is your freshwater flush. Do not start the motor, but when you get back, you can unscrew this, put a garden hose up to it. Just turn the water on and let it rinse out. Do not start the motor with that one. You can also use this one to flush it, but you do trim the motor all the way down, turn water, start. Always have water go into the motor. Now another little trick. A lot of these guys don't know this, but say your batteries went dead. Uh, the hydraulic pump on this motor went out. Right here, there's a little motor with a little screw. A uh, standard screwdriver fits in there. If you got stuck and that motor was down, just take your screwdriver, do a counterclockwise one turn. It releases the pressure so you can lift that motor up. Then you can lock it and you're on your way so you can get it fixed. So. I'm presuming this and it even has your rear deck lights too in the back that are adjustable plus your anchor light. So now we'll go on the inside. Now to the inside. This is crazy Kirk the janitor again. Look at how deep this is. This is why they call it the deep V. 39 inches on the outside. I bet you it's a good 30 on the inside. You got your wash down pump over there. Rear cowling fish box. Look how deep that is. Man, you talk about putting some tuna in there. I could think of a lot of things to put in there, but anyway, let's go on the inside. Again, worst down pump right there. That's your hose. Okay, then back here you got your rod holders. Back here you got M4 fish box. Back here. You got your B or dual battery switch. You got a mini micron uh, water separator for your kicker, your main 10 micron for the main. Shut off the valve for your worst down pump. And right over there is your auto bilge pump. Then if you want to go over here, there's your dual batteries. And just uh, holding power over here. Now, let's go inside. These must be about 51 inch seats. You take these backs off. There's some slider bars. This is a bed for two people. And the nice thing with partial hard tops, you got your side tray for storage. You got grab handles right here. You can hang on to that go all the way back. You got dome light. Oh, and these are your suspension Bosch seats. Double ram, these are called your big boys. Got two shocks. So these are going to be a lot stiffer than a lot of the single shocks. These also have got swivels, so you can swivel them around with armrests. Grab handle, power point, double cup holder, grab rail again, Yamaha multi tack. You got your uh, Yamaha speed right here and trim tabs, flush mount control, 12. 12 volt power point here, dual wipers, and this is this nice gull wing. So if you want it open up to get a little air in here, just undo that, pop it up. Isn't that nice? Get some ventilation in here. Then you open this up. Again, these are these hats. You can yank this whole window out of here. See a nice step up, boom, boom, you're right up in front. Look at that. Hey, we got water in there. How in the heck did we get that out? Oh well, add a little weight. I'm kidding. I can pump it out. 
Got bow rails, a little storage up into here, and carpeted. Look at that. This can be a quiet ride, very quiet. And you got some lights, floor lights here on both sides. It lights up the floor, keeps it off your face. Okay, let's take this big bad boy out and see what it does. You ready? Water that was up in there. Here, I'll show you. See all that water? Not a lot of water in there. Anyway, they got what they call a seacock valve, which is right here. That drains it. Okay, we're gonna start this big bad boy up. This is a fuel injected. She's running. Wow. That's quiet, Mom. You hear that? Now, with this like this, now that's going to be draining once we get it up on top. And then I can just walk out here if I wanted to. And now look at this. Look how shallow this is. This is a DV. You can make it in this stuff. But my main concern is the propping. And we're going to find out here in a minute. Pretty sure of myself by taking this bumper off, ain't I? I'll just throw this thing right here. Because it tracks so nice. See how easy this pulls away from the dock? Wow. I can tell you right now, this is going to be quiet. No water roll. Spins on a dime. There we go. Got to get a little beautiful day out here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? That you can pull your bumper in here too. That's one nice thing with these sliders. Just pull your bumper right in, come up to the dock, let your bumper out. No need of crawling around the side of the boat. Yeah, she's about idling right where she should. Got a little bit of current going here. These seats are a lot nicer. And you got your sliders, your height adjustment, and you also got your swivel. Yeah, you can tell it's out nasty out in the ocean. Yeah, there's no boats out here except for me. You can see those swells kind of growing like that right here with no really wind, just a little bit of breeze. That means, and I'll show you here in a minute, that means that ocean's probably blown out. Probably got 10 foot plus. The little bit of wind waves. That's a good indication if it gets this far up the bay. So anyway, I'm draining that up front. Horn works. Bill's pump works. In the, uh, out of gear into neutral, we're pushing right at about uh, 700. Dang near got over half a tank of fuel. No hours on the boat. Rear aft lights work good. These are your trim tabs. Hear that? So they're opposite. You push down, they're actually up. If you push up on them, they actually go down. Vice versa, if you hit this one, it raises your port. If you hit this, it raises your starboard or lowers your starboard. Wiper, both work. Okay, I'm going to do something just for fun of it. Uh, 2.7. miles an hour okay we're gonna put it in gear it dropped it about five to six hundred and that's exactly where you want it to drop on that listen to that motor that is like quiet now we're gonna close this so just grab both of these until you can get to this you can leave that front one open if you like now I'm gonna just see how fast things if I can keep this under control now look how big these windows are you can see out of here you don't have to look through the window like that you can just look straight out my eyes are hitting right here now I always judge the speed unless you got a speed wheel for water I'll always look at a pylon or a building because the water is an illusion it'll make you seem like you're going faster than what you are now this says it's 2.7 which I have a hard time believing that 
So what I'm going to do, nah, it could be. Tide's coming in. So let's rip the other way. Let me turn on my phone. Good old Samsung Galaxy 3. Hey, you iPhone lovers. I'm telling you. Galaxy 4. Scott said he's going to get me a Galaxy 4. And I'll, I'll settle with the iPad, too, you know, for a backup. But I, I need my uh, Galaxy 4. But that Scott Lancaster said that he was going to do that for me. He's a nice guy. Yeah, the owner of Wine Marina. But whoever ordered this boat, I didn't normally I order all the big ones. But whoever did this did an excellent job. I mean, this is how I order boats. I mean, it's decked out. It's very reasonable. It's got that 200 you can barely hear. Now, I turned on my GPS. Now, I'm going to go into my... Um, Oh, what do they call that trip? If I can find it, they got so many apps on these phones now. Instagram, Mavericks. Now nah, we don't need that BS. Okay, see these swells that I'm telling you about? That means that jetty is blown out. Boy, it'd be nice if I could find you. See, you got these all these apps. And I'll be darned if you try to find one you want. And I, then I forgot what it was called, too. Oh, well, it ain't Maverick, Mobile. MX Mariner is a good app to get to if you guys don't have that. That's like Navionics. That'll do your um, GPS. Very quiet boat. Yeah, there it is. Speed view. I should have found that to start with. Gosh darn it. Now I can see myself. My nose is running. Oh, look at these. Beautiful. Okay, let's hit this. Let's get a GPS fix. And I'm going to put my phone right here. And we're going to see how fast this sucker uh, will troll. Oh, this, oh, this is going to have power, too. It is getting a little breezy in here, so uh, I might just close one of these. Make sure I got my GPS sitting on. Yep. Make sure I got my data on. Data usage. Yep. So we should be good to go. This thing just, I guess, wants to work when it wants to work. But let's see what it'll do. Really no cavitation. After all, oh yeah, look at this. These swells right here. Now, see how she wants to lean a little bit over here to the side? Now, see, we're going on that side, so we're going to hit this one down. See how the boat's starting to level off? Now, just use one tab. You don't have to use both of these. Just use one. Now the boat's leveled out. Now I still got my trim all the way down as you can see right here. Now we're doing 27 miles an hour right here and uh, we're only turning 3600 RPM. And again, I'm not getting any. I'm going to shut these windows. See how that's quieting this boat down? You really can't hear the motor. Again, now what I'm going to do, oh yeah, it is rough. Matter of fact, if you look straight out, you probably can't see this. But when it's crashing off of that south jetty and off the north side, if you start getting some, uh, say, three to six foot breakers on the north reef, yeah, you don't want to go out in the ocean. Okay, I'm going to back this thing way off and see what we can troll down to with this 200. Okay, there's one mile an hour right there. So I'm going to put it in gear. Now we're in gear. See that? If you look at the land, we're not going. There's the seals over there. There's two miles an hour. Three. So I can actually hold this thing if I wanted to at zero. Just put it in reverse a little bit because of this hole. It'll take it. I could troll with this 200 if I had to. See, again, one mile an hour. Now, I'm going to turn the other way and see what it does. There's one. 
There's zero. I'm going to put in gear. Look at that. It's in gear right now. That's how fast that current's going. We're still at zero. And I'm in gear. See? So I've got to actually bump it up. See how I'm bumping that up just to get it to troll. And that's with the 200. There's one mile an hour. I'm turning about 10,000 uh, RPMs. There's two. That is awesome. Okay, now we'll see how fast it takes to plane. I also want to see what it will cruise at. Typically, 4200 is a good cruising speed. Now, you can do it two ways. Okay, if, if the tide's coming in or going out, it's going to change your speed probably five miles an hour. Okay, right there, about 4200. That's perfect, typically good cruising speed. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. That will give you a little better ride in this short little swell. Let's get her back down about 42. We're doing 35 miles an hour at 4,200 RPM. This is your best fuel economy right here. Now I'm going to go the other way. And you'll see this speed variation. Oh, what a nice boat. Get her back up to 42. 4200. Now I'm going to use this tab again. Now see how it was leaning? Now again, you only use one. You don't have to use both of these. And that's just because of the way the current's going. The current hits the bow of the boat and wants to pull it. 31 miles an hour. So that's telling me right now we are going against the current. And that's pretty good to do 30 against the current. So that's about a five mile an hour current. Now anytime you do a tight turn, of course you want to turn this down. So now what we're going to see what it does out of the whole shot. Oh, beautiful boat. Okay, now I'm going to hit this grab because we're leaning again. There we go. Bring it back. Just use one of them. Okay, now we're going to stop it, trim down. And trim tab, just so you know, don't. the only way they do any good is when you're on top because if you're off a plane, they're not working, just so you know. And of course, um, we should be able to pick up some pretty good speed. I'm going to say, if this is propped right, we're going to do probably 40 miles an hour. But you got to remember, this is an inline 200 four cylinder, not the big V6. So let's see how many seconds to plane. 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. So two and a half seconds to plane this boat. And I think I just lost my buoy. So we better go get that. See it right over there? Wonder how in the heck that came undone. There we go. Yeah, it did. It came right off the rope. How do you like that? See how nice as boat handles the wind won't blow it all over the place so anyway i'm probably making ryan mad right now because i'm burning up all the time and he's got to edit this now you can see we're getting shallow water right here it's getting brown we want to head over here so now let's see i'm going to start trimming it up we're at 4900 5100 I'm going to start trimming. There's 54.
500 right now. So 55, 56. We're running a 17 pitch, 42 miles an hour. We could drop this thing because I've really got to get this thing trimmed up. You hear that? So just about where you want to be. So we can drop that to a 15 if they have it. And then that would get me up to that 6,000 uh, RPM range. But this is awesome. Would have pushed a 22-foot boat. Two and a half seconds to plane. You were doing 35, say 30 to 35 miles an hour at 4,200 feet field economy. And now we're going to turn the other way, which is shallow. So we're going to go this way. And against the current, we'll see what we can get. So I think we're right there on prop. Of course, we have the tab down as well. So I'm going to bring that tab up all the way, even though it leans, just to get a true reading. Telling the test tank, you actually got to be on the water under a load. So here we go again, and I don't care if it's leaning, I just want to see if I can pick up a few hundred RPM. This is what I was telling you about. It's way over there. But you can see it crashing on the south side. This ain't really too much out here. You got you got a little bit here and there. We'll be doing. This boat will take it. See how they all start breaking over there? Now, of course, we're going the worst possible way. We're going against see we got some coming at us right here yeah this will be fun now normal guy he's not going to be doing this okay I'll let leave the window open so you can see out see these right here now I'm going to show you what this boat will do so you got these little short ones. And there's a big drop. And again, it's a nice smooth ride. And I think it's a closed bar. <laughs> Not even just um, alcohol too, you can't drink out here. But anyway, the flag's up, so that means small crab advisory. Yeah. You can see them rolling. Wow. I don't even think I'd fall. Oh, geez, even over here to them. I don't know if you can see way over there, but they're breaking hard. Okay, I'm just going to go up here. Actually, I'm past where I'm, I think I'm supposed to be anyway. Because 5 Alp is where they turn it off. And they'll probably send the Coast Guard out here pretty quick. So don't do this. I'm just going to show you what the boat will do. So right about here, I'm going to start turning it. I'm going to wait for some big ones. I'm going to get on it. Now I'm even going to turn it with the window open. 
Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Gee, what a nice boat. Side swell it, no big deal. Yeah, it's rough out there. Holy cow. That would be a ride. So now I'm going to back it up. And there's another nice thing with the offshore bracket. When you back it up, you don't get it rolling over the inside. See, there's a big one coming. And we're in reverse. See how it just splashed like that? That Most boats, if you would have had a motor wheel, would have splashed on over. Okay, this is all I needed to see. But now if you look up, we got a few little, not, nothing major. But now I'm going to hit it and see what we can do. Here's the uh, crazy Kurt the janitor, Mr. Hollywood Alpha.